Here is another amazing retro database from the 99-2000 season by Mr. Tiny on the Manager. And this brings so much nostalgia. And there's the ability to download a file which means real players come through the youth it takes. Yes, that's right. So let's recreate some history and simulate this database from 1999 to what would be present day. Because some absolutely bonkers stuff can happen that will make you laugh. Now a reminder because it was 24 years ago but the 2000 season ended with Manchester United winning the Premier League title with Arsenal and Leeds in second and third and Wimbledon, Sheffield Wednesday and Watford being relegated. With Kevin Phillips also winning the Golden boot with 30 goals and Alan Shearer in second place. Now I always expect FM to obviously play things out a little different because obviously this is a retro database but this is wildly accurate because Manchester United were champions with 85 points. I believe it was 91. I've got it on my screen and 91 points that they actually got in real life so the gap between them and Arsenal was a lot more because Arsenal only had 73. Man United ran away with it in 2000. It was Kind of like Sir Alex Ferguson's best ever season, I think, as uh, Manchester United in the league. Arsenal and Leeds finished in second place, as we mentioned they would. The relegation teams are different, though. Sheffield Wednesday, Wimbledon and Watford all survived it. Instead, it was Derby, Bradford and Sunderland who went down. And the Golden Boot winner was Michael Owen. In fact, the top three... Nowhere to be seen for what actually happened. If you went and had a look, Alan Shearer was down here with 17 goals. And you can see Alan Shearer looks really good, but you'd obviously kind of know from playing FM a little bit, like his attributes aren't going to score a lot of goals because he doesn't have a lot of pace compared to what the game is like in real life compared to what it is in Football Manager. Pace is kind of really important, uh, which is probably why Michael Owen won it because... He has 19 for pace and acceleration. It's very good. Uh, Kevin Phillips, who actually won the Golden Boot, was down here in 11th. Now, he doesn't have as slow a pace as what Alan Shearer does, but I'd imagine because he's at Sunderland, who don't necessarily have a great team on this, they aren't going to produce a lot of chances for Kevin Phillips, who could potentially get 25, 30 goals if he was in a better side. But, I mean, Sunderland finished 20th, so... Hey. Now, just to highlight how great this database is, once you use the, the new gens coming through as real players, my team Plymouth, my hometown Plymouth, was in the nationwide third division, which I think is League 2 right now. And they actually finished behind Exeter, which is annoying. But anyway, if you have a look at their youth intake... It's the real players. Paul Connolly came through the youth team around about then. So did Luke McCormick, the goalkeeper. So it's wildly accurate, the players that are coming through. Now let's have a look at the other leagues. So in La Liga, I believe Deportivo La Coruña actually won the 2000 La Liga title. Uh, Barcelona here have won it. They finished in second in real life with Valencia in third. Real Madrid by the looks of it, had a very bad season. They actually finished in fifth place in real life with 60 points. So they've outperformed what they've done because they were only a point off Barcelona. It's a really tight uh, lead title that we can see here in La Liga. And I think Real Madrid boss actually got sacked here. They did. This was just before the Galacticos era came in. So uh, obviously we, we, we will eventually have seen the Zidans and etc. being signed by Real Madrid. But I don't think it will happen here. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. So Barcelona are title holders there. In Italy, which this season was won by Lazio, they finish in fourth. And Juventus won the league with 87 points. But look who is the golden boot winner in Italy. It's Ronaldo, followed by Shevchenko, followed by Batistuta. And if you're wondering why I always have an affection for Italian football, it's because growing up, those three there were my favourite strikers. Probably in that order as well. Ronaldo, obviously R9, was unbelievable and such a shame that he decided to party hard and get a couple of injuries. Shevchenko actually had a couple of bad injuries, which stopped him from being amazing. And Batistuta, I mean, oh my, I absolutely adored uh, Batistuta. And he's coming towards the end of his career here, but he's still amazing. Age 31. So that really warmed my heart. Now, in terms of the players that came through the youth intake in the very first season, if you did download this database with that added on extra, you're going to see the likes of Robin Van Persie at final. Now, the only thing I would say is they're very overpowered for like a 16-year-old player coming through. Like Darren Fletcher, I don't think was ever that good in his career, but here he is. For 143 current ability at age 16. There are some fantastic players. Pazzini comes through. Adam Bayor is there. Carlos Tevez coming through at Boca Juniors just looks scary good. And Philip Lamb, one of the best right backs of all time, in my opinion. Cialini, Mascarano. There's so many players. Iron Robbins in it. 
Iniesta, one of the greatest center attacking or center midfielders Spain has ever seen, come through the very first season. So already you're going to have so much fun if you do decide to do this just by simulating a season and starting now, you're already going to have a laugh. And I cannot wait to get me and my dad on this. I'm really sure we're going to do something with this database at some point. The Champions League was dramatic as always as Arsenal and AC Milan progressed through to the final where AC Milan won on penalties after a 1-1 finish. The following season saw Arsenal fight back which goes against the reality of Manchester United winning a third in a row. But Danny, a Manchester United player who was signed during the simulation, picks up the golden boot and David Beckham picks up the highest average rating after a truly phenomenal season scoring 15 goals and 11 assists. But there was not a lot of other surprises in other leagues. My three favourite strikers in Italy doing the business again and the Bundesliga being won by Bayern which you'd expect. Rangers have won both titles in Scotland as well, but this is where it gets interesting. Now, unfortunately, just like the modern day, the Saudi Arabian clubs are buying players. And it's kind of, I guess it would be really difficult to try and stop that from happening. So they might disrupt some things, but there is some very notable transfers that I thought we could definitely talk about, such as... The wonder kid, Ronaldinho, he's only 20, going to Chelsea uh, for £9.75 million. An absolute steal. But back then, that was a lot of money. And he probably would have been worth it, to be fair. From Gremio. Now, he does look amazing. But we know he comes into being one of the best players ever when he moved to Barcelona. He has 200 potential. So that's exciting to see how his career starts to develop going forward. But there is obviously some other noticeable names. You can see Philip Koku there going to Fiorentina again for really cheap costs. It's quite interesting. There's the Danny move. We've got Claude Makaleli, unfortunately, going out of football by going to Saudi Arabia. That's just something that we cannot prevent. Steve McManamon's gone to Rangers, so that's an interesting one. So there's loads of different things that uh, are going to be here that we can see. And it's going to be quite exciting when all of the new gens start coming through. Now, one thing that I did check, because I know everybody will ask, is the Ballon d'Or. I don't know whether it will eventually start showing us a Ballon d'Or winner because this one's still the 2022-23 season. Hopefully it does. I don't know if it will. But what we can see was that this year would have been Michael Owen's year to win it. I don't think it will be this year, though. Turns out it is working fine, and David Beckham is our first Ballon d'Or winner. The following season, Chelsea managed to win a league title ahead of schedule, and before the chosen one and Abramovich's money. But of course, they do have an ever-grown Ronaldinho, who could have helped the situation despite Beckham having the highest average rating again. Zay Roberto's Leverkusen side won the Bundesliga ahead of Bayern Munich and Dortmund, and Arnheim was still winning the Golden Boot in Italy, despite his Inter Milan side falling to sixth place in the league with AC Milan lifting the Scudetto. And after some Italian dominance in the Champions League, Bayern Munich lift their trophy defeating Real Madrid in extra time. While Fernando Morientes of Real Madrid wins the Ballon d'Or with Clarence Seydorf also at Madrid finishing in second place and Inter Milan's Christian Vieri finishing in third. But another wild batch for the youth intake this year with some of the best players of the late 2000s and early 2010s coming through for us to track the careers of. But we got to get cracking through some seasons, so let's skip forward another five years, so we're about eight years years in total and let's see what's happened because there is also a couple of players who are about to come through that would define a generation right so we're in 2031 so we're about eight years into this experiment or simulation newcastle are the champions of the premier league this is mental i'm not quite sure how they've done it unless they have some kind of tycoon takeover it doesn't look like it it looks like they were just really clever with their signings because they've got Harry Kuehl as their key player right now. So, I mean, their team looks unbelievable. They've got Robin Van Persie, Gilardinho. They've got an unbelievable sign, Nicolas Otamendi at age 19. <laughs> I love doing these things. They are one of my favorite things to do as a retro database. Uh, no Alan Shearer, though. So where did Alan Shearer head off to? Please don't tell me he went to Man United. He retired at 34. 34. That's a shame. Uh, he actually went to Saudi Arabia as well for a couple of seasons. But there we go. So he had a great career, but unfortunately, he might have just missed out. So they won the Carlin Premiership there. Did they win it? They did. Okay, 2029. He might have actually won one. Chelsea were runner up the last three years. Liverpool won it there as well, which obviously didn't happen. And Manchester United won it in 2030. So this is when the era of this would have been when Chelsea and Mourinho started to take over around about 2027, uh, 20, uh, 2007, sorry. So 
this is roughly where we're looking at right now, about eight years into the future. So 20, 2008, 2007, around that time. Man United were amazing back then because they won the Champions League. I don't think they've done that here. Uh, they're in third place. They st they've now got Sven Goran Eriksson. Uh, so wh what happened to Sir Alex? He was sacked. He was sacked. I don't believe it. And Sven Goran Eriksson, uh, shout out to him. Obviously, he's come out recently and said he's got uh, terminal cancer. He is four years deep into this Manchester, nearly five years deep into this Manchester United role. Amazing. They still got some cracking players. Paul Scholes, Gary Neville. No David Beckham, though. Uh, we'll find him in a second. Robin Van Persie is there, as we can see. Peter Crouch is there as a 26-year-old at Nottingham Forest. Loads of things to have a look at, but let's see then at La Liga. So, Real Madrid are champions. Uh, we've got Flando Lorente coming through the Athletic Bilbao Youth Academy. Fernando Morientes is still knocking around and still scoring a lot of goals. Patrick Kluivert is still doing the same for Barcelona, which I think he had already left for by then. And there's David Beckham, still putting in the highest average rate where the league he goes, but he's gone to the Galacticos. Which is quite funny, because I mentioned it earlier, how he probably won't see that. And then they've actually gone and bought David Beckham. Now, they didn't actually buy him. He was a free transfer. But again, kind of like what happened, as we've probably seen in the documentary of David Beckham. He stepped off a little bit when he moved to Spain. Because he had a very good last season there with 10 goals, 5 assists. Uh, and he's con consistently almost getting 10 goals every single season since we've been simulating but at Real Madrid no he got a lot of assists but a good average rating as well so that's uh, David Beckham's career how he's been getting on at Real Madrid what about in the Bundesliga so we've got well actually to be fair we had, need to have a look at past winners so Real Madrid's actually been dominating Barcelona won it two seasons before that they of course had Lionel Messi and I don't think they got Lionel Messi anymore well I have to find that so Xavi is their key player he's 27 now but they have sold Lionel Messi at some point. Or they just lost him for a free transfer. They sold him to one for 1.6 million to Napoli. Oh, talk about dropping the ball. <laughs> the greatest player ever to live. And you sold him 1.5 million pound. Now, he has a 200 uh, potential ability. He's at 186. This doesn't look like a 186 player. And I'll tell you for the reason why. When you put in the attributes in the editor that you want, you know, a, a 200, 200 potential player. And then you add the likes of strong on both feet, which I don't think he's that good on his right foot. But there we go. And natural in multiple positions. That eats up attribute points, which means he's not going to look as good. Which is a shame, I think. I think there needs to be a, a way of determining that. Because I think attribute wise... It needs to be different. I, I think so, anyway. But anyway, Barcelona, they're in second place right now. They're trailing Real Madrid the last couple of seasons uh, after a few bits, a few years of dominance. In the Bundesliga, Bayer Leverkusen's won it again, but Bayern Munich won it three years in a row, and Dortmund also won it. So Bayern Munich has just sacked their manager. Philip Lamb is still the key player there, which is nice. It's good to see. So that's quite cool. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen, we got Cassano as their key player. I love these old kits, these retro kits. Uh, by the way, I haven't mentioned it yet, but Mr. Tiny, this database is currently on his Patreon for early access. He's uh, very, very gratefully for, in my in my opinion, give me the, the access for for this. So I, I thank you very much, Mr. Tiny, for this. So I can showcase this and, and, and let you guys know all about it. Uh, and it will be available free to the public um, in very early February. So if it is early February, you can check out all this social media and you can probably find it there all the kits and stuff will probably be on his patreon which is how he did it for the last retro database as well uh, so please go and support him i think this is amazing what he's actually done italian syria we've got milan winning the the scudetto but with napoli finishing second of course with Lionel messi who's nowhere to be seen just yet interestingly enough and ac milan has dominated which is quite funny so juventus there have louis van hal as their manager they've got zambrotta edwin van der sar i just love going through this and just seeing like where teams where players go where they go instead so walter samuel is is their key player that's that's weird isn't it good too so is their captain uh, they don't look like they got an amazing team, but they just seem to have done really well. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. They do have an amazing team. They got Rubinho, who was amazing at the early point of his career. They got Ruud van Nistelrooy. Oh, hello. I mean, yes, they are absolutely firing on all cylinders. They've got Paul Robinson. Incredible stuff. They've got Rory Delap. 
It's no wonder why this AC Milan team has been absolutely dominating Italy. This is incredible to see. Andre Andrei Shevchenko is still there, of course. He's probably been overshadowed because of, you know, Rory Delap. Uh, uh, they've got Aubameyang at 17 coming through and already looks insane. Yeah, they got some cracking players. So... <sighs> I can see why they have managed to do that. Now, the other divisions, I'm pretty sure, the last time I checked, yeah, Rangers just been dominating Scotland. It's not even been close. They've got John Hartson as their, uh, their goal scorer. Celtic have not put up a fight one bit. So that's been quite a boring lead to look at, if I'm honest. Nothing's really changed or done anything in those divisions. Uh, let's have a look at the Champions League and see what's been going on there. Barcelona are the current winners. Newcastle won it twice. Juventus, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Ruud van Nistelrooy is the top scorer this year. Diego Melito, uh, one of my favourite uh, Inter Milan players from that 2010 era. Kieran Dyer's at Marseille. Kieran bloody Dyer. He's at Marseille. That's that's insane. I just love it. There's Cristiano Ronaldo. I mentioned how he is now in the game. He's only 22 and he hasn't moved yet. And he's not even wanted. Like, what is going on here? So he also has a very high potential and he's almost at it. He's up. He is. 196 out of 196. He is at his maximum. Nobody's interested, even though he is 30 million. He is 30 million. He's got two years left on his deal. He's on a very low wage. 30 million. Putting in the performances of a lifetime and not one speck of interest. Absolutely insane to me. Now, speaking of Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, Lionel Messi, let's have a look at the Ballon d'Ors and who's been winning it. Oh, Van Nistelrooy, yes. I love that. Veron. Both of these players in this era played for Man United. Neither of them had this much success. Uh, Morientes won it a couple of times. Clarence Sadoff won it a couple of times. You can see like the runners up sent, tend to be the similar types of players. Michael Owen run up there in 2027. Morientes again. So Shevchenko's been quite unlucky, I think. He's been there or thereabouts a few times. But yeah, David Beckham on the first one. And it's been quite entertaining ever since. Okay. I'll have a look to see if there is any entertaining transfers, but I can't imagine there'll be that many. So, any high ones, should I say. So, the fees have been really low, which are surprising, but it's been quite good, actually, to see that. Usually, by now, in the real game, you'd see hundreds of million pounds being spent. Ryan Giggs has gone to Saudi Arabia from Aston Villa. What? Now, that's a weird one. You don't tend to see that happen very often, do you? Now, we've got Leon Osman going to Brighton for 10 million. Uh, this is what I mean. There's, I, I think there's going to be a lot of free transfers. Christian Vieri's left. He's gone to Al Ali from Tottenham. Again, very surprising to even see him at, at Tottenham in a Tottenham shirt. makaleli has gone to Barcelona. Robin Van Persie's only just moved to Newcastle for 11 million pound. It was an absolute steal uh, to get Robin Van Persie. Cannavaro! In real life, picks up a Ballon d'Or around about this time from the World Cup, which we need to look at. He has just moved to Saudi Arabia from West Ham. Roy Delap, by the way, was at Bayern Munich before and cost 14 million. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. There's some crazy stuff happening, and I'm just really enjoying myself. Samuel Eto'o's gone to Bayern Munich. Rui Costa, one of my all-time favorite players, uh, retired at 34, but he did go to Saudi Arabia for a bit. There was the Harry Kuehl deal for 34 million pound. We need to see... Ronaldo, because I'm pretty sure he's moved. R9. Yeah, he's at Leeds. I I don't know. He moved on a free, and he's had some whopping seasons. 17 goals, very consistently, in the Premier League. And they finished in about 7th place. So, R9 is in the Premier League, as is Ronaldinho. Two things that never happened in my lifetime that I really have like wanted, wished so much. Even if it wasn't at my club, just so I could see them play week after week. It's quite nice to see that in here. All right, there's been two World Cups. No surprises. Brazil won both. So, obviously, their team is absolutely disgusting. Ronaldo, as we've seen. Ronaldinho, Zé Roberto. There's a few unbelievable players that they've got. Roberto Carlos, Lucio Rivaldo. I mean, Rivaldo is coming towards the end of his career, 35. Look how good he still is at 35. Absolutely insane. Never went to Olympiacos here, did he? No, he stayed at Barcelona and had an incredible time. I want to take a quick moment as well to thank you all. For everybody who's donated to my charity wrestling event, we've raised over £500 now, which is amazing. Now, tickets are going quite slowly, but we started announcing some matches now. So... Let's get those tickets sold. If you can come all the way down to Plymouth Salt Ash and have a watch of our show, that would be amazing. But please don't stop the donations. We're doing this all for charities, all for an amazing cause. I will be wrestling on the card. And if you want, 
you can even meet Dad because he's going to be there too. So it's well worth coming down for the journey. If you have a, a, a bit of a drive to get down here, it might be worth it as a cracking weekend. But there are other ways you can watch me wrestle. In fact, I am wrestling in February in Plymouth for Reach Wrestling against a ex NXT UK star Levi Muir. That is February the 10th in Lipson. And if you can't get to Plymouth, maybe you can get to Trowbridge, which I am also wrestling a couple of melts in that match for UCW. It's our debut there. If you can get to Trowbridge, that is February the 11th. Those are all the matches that I have coming up right now. For everybody who keeps asking, that's where you can find me. If you want some tickets, let me know down in the comments section and I'll send you the link. What a career David Beckham has had, but he's finally retiring here. We're five years on into this. And I thought this was a very noble thing to start off with because, of course, the former Ballon d'Or winner here is in Saudi Arabia and he's finishing his off his career after actually a lot better time in Real Madrid than what he had in real life. I think he would have been buzzing to have a time like that in Real Madrid with 20 assists in one season and another season with 14 player of the matches and an eight average rating. He had a fantastic time. He didn't have to go to L.A., went to Saudi Arabia, but still, I mean, it was a shame he obviously didn't get to go to Milan and PSG because I think it's quite iconic to his career that he played in so many, like, very cool cities. So, yeah, but there we go. That is David Beckham's career coming to an end here in 2036. However, Liverpool are champions once again with 91 points. Their current manager is Malesi. Oh, I'm not quite sure who that is. Some of these face packs uh, don't show up, but they still got Steven Gerrard, age 32. He stayed loyal to them all the way through, kind of like what he did in real life. But we've got some interesting teams up here in higher up in the division. So Newcastle still around, Chelsea, Leicester. I'm knocking around and they got Ray Lewington as their manager. Leighton Baines is their key player, which I think is quite funny. I mean, if that's their key player, fair play how they've managed to finish in fourth place there. Ahead of Man United, who have a different manager once again. And Darren Fletcher is their key player. <laughs> what they rated Darren Fletcher at? 175. He seems to be amazing, really. Which is quite shocking. But there we go. So, the Premier League is dominated by Liverpool's Michael Owen for the goals. He stayed there throughout his whole career, by the looks of it. Avoided a lot of injuries and done really well. Robin Van Persie with 23 at Newcastle. He's done excellent. Dirk Cow is at Arsenal, which is quite funny. And actually, I think I've seen him there to begin with. He's been there for ages. He's enjoyed his time in Arsenal. Which is quite funny. Ronaldinho is still at Chelsea. But he's about to leave. He's going to Al Etihad again. Saudi Arabia ruining the experiment. But he's had a lovely time. Iron Robbins at Chelsea as he actually did in real life. Wayne Rooney has stayed with Everton. Unless he's left and gone back like he did. No. He's also had 62 caps with 51 goals for England. Which is quite something really. Uh, better than what his actual tally was in real life. Alexis Sanchez is at Leeds. Speaking of Leeds, is he still there? Ronaldo's still there, yes. Yogi Love is the manager, which I think is quite funny. Lee Bowyer is the captain, vice captain, R9. 35 years old. He's avoided all the injuries. He looks amazing still. Oh, look at that for a season. 2032, which was the season after we last looked at, 27 goals with 12 assists. That's unbelievable. What a time he has had. I don't want to spoil it in case he got a Ballon d'Or. I was going to have a look to see if on his milestones, but I don't want to spoil it just yet. Some really crazy stuff, and we're just on the Premier League. Let's have a look around. Lo La Liga. We've got, oh, actually, we didn't have a look to see the past winners. Past winners. Leicester won it. Leicester won it. They've done a Leicester. They've, they've physically done a Leicester. La Liga. Past winners, kind of as you'd expect. Looking around, Patrick Clivert's still there, Pazzini's there, so Douglas Costa's doing quite well from the wing at uh, Real Madrid. Iniesta and Xavi are reunited still at Barcelona. we got Frank Ribéry at Real Madrid, who looks really good, by the way. Some interesting stuff going on there in Spain. What about the Bundesliga? Stuttgart are the champions. Schalke are second. Wow. Oscar Cardozo. I love that guy. The Paraguayan. Unbelievable striker. Uh, so there's some interesting stuff going on there. Past winners uh, has been mixed bag as well. No team just been dominating, which is quite nice. That's, that's good. We like to see that. The Italian Serie A. We've got AC Milan, who's won it there. Higuain's at Napoli. Did he sign for Napoli? He did? Weird how that happens, isn't it? Haven't seen Messi, though. Messi's still there. Lionel Messi, key player, still at Napoli. 
Ooh, okay, so has he reached his maximum yet? He's almost there. Uh, so he's 24 years of age. I mean, that's underwhelming, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little bit underwhelming compared to what he actually does in real life. That's very underwhelming. Okay, so the goal scorer or the pass winner, sorry. Napoli have won it, so at least he's won three on the bounce in Italy, but AC Milan has well and truly dominated this, this era since we've started. The Scottish League was the only other league that I had loaded, and I, I, I got a feeling it's just been really boring. Oh, Hearts have won it. Fair play, and Celtic have won their first. Who would have thought that Hearts would have won it before Celtic has, but there we go. I mean, that's quite an interesting one. Champions League. We can have a look at that. Real Madrid are the current winners, but past winners. We've got Newcastle, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Milan. Uh, yeah, that's been quite interesting. But the last one is the Ballon d'Or. Who has been winning? Oh, yes. Ronaldinho with three. Didier Drogba. Do you know what? As a Manchester United fan, I really did not like Didier Drogba while he was playing. But after that, he retired. Learn to appreciate him, didn't you? And Didier Drogba is one of those players. I absolutely think he's just one of the most underappreciated strikers in the Premier League. Ronaldinho has done very well at Chelsea. Three Ballon d'Ors on the bounce at Chelsea. That's absolutely incredible. Rudan Nistelrooy at AC Milan has done basically a Van Basten and won three uh, Ballon d'Ors in four years uh, as a Dutch striker at AC Milan. And, and stuff like that, I just love. Okay, I've got... I've gone to 2041, another five years, and I clicked on the wrong thing to begin with, and my whole reality and, and, and everything I know and love from football has gone straight out the window because of this. Now, ignore this. This is what I'm talking about. Cristiano Ronaldo's at Barcelona. Yeah, he went to Bayern Munich for £20 million. He spent some time there, did quite well, went to Barcelona. What's weird, though, is look who's at Real Madrid at the same time, Lionel Messi, who moved roughly around about the same time. This makes me sad, but also at the same time, I love when you do experiments like this and the most random coincidences happen. Like, obviously, this is, you start the game, they got no, like, preference to stay on course of what actually happened in their timeline, but then they just switched. I love that. I think I think like uh, stuff like that is amazing. Uh, Eden Hazard's at Everton for some reason. Uh, Gareth Bale's at Newcastle, and he's doing quite well as well. Uh, if you went by the highest current ability, right now it is Lionel Messi. Mamo Neuer is still at Schalke. Mohamed Salah is also at Real Madrid. So their team is disgusting right now because they got Messi and Mohamed Salah and Yakubu. <laughs> I don't know. Fabio Capello's the manager. Uh, some funny things happen, aren't they? That's, you might see some other names. You might recognize the Kanji's there. Because uh, we're getting quite close to real life now. Companies there. Uh, obviously, Yakuba, Philip Max, Anderson. Is that the, the Anderson from? It is. Yeah, the Brazilian one that was at Man United. Yes, yeah, some strange things have really happened. Kevin De Bruyne is also at Liverpool. Luis Suarez is still there. Still, he's there. Uh, there's some strange stuff. Wayne Rooney is going to was still at Everton, sorry, for his whole career. He stayed there, which is probably the reason why Everton has had quite a successful time. Uh, and they've managed to like boost their reputation and sign the likes of Eden Hazard, who's done quite well for them. Uh, Antoine Griezmann's at Stuttgart. Has he been there the whole time? No. He moved, and that was pretty much his only move, to be fair. Van Dijk is at Liverpool at age 25. I think this might be the first season that they had him when he was 25, I think. I might be wrong, but I think it was. So that's quite a coincidence. Raheem Sterling is at Derby County. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, I did notice there's also uh, a young Harry Kane knocking around, but we'll have a look at and see where he is at the minute. we got Bernardo Silva. Marco Royce is at Dortmund still. Uh, Benzema is at Everton. Oh, actually, Marco Royce doesn't start at Dortmund. He, do he does. I thought he didn't. I thought I might be, I'm, you might correct me there, but I thought he started at Borussia Mönchengladbach. I could be right, I could be wrong. Alisson is also at Real Madrid, so again, their team, Benzema is at Everton. There's some strange stuff going on. Dybala is at Barcelona. Uh, there's Harry Kane. There is Harry Kane. He is at Tottenham. 
still uh, after coming through their youth academy. Has he played a game for England? He has. He started some games for England, so that would be interesting to see how he progresses up until modern day. Uh, Tony Cruz at Bayern Minute. There's a couple of Liverpool players who are actually in Liverpool, which is mental. Uh, Mauro Cardi is at Barcelona. Yeah, there's some cool stuff going on. Uh, let's have a look at the leagues then. We've got Liverpool who Liverpool and Everton. So Merseyside is completely dominating right now. Has Everton won one? They have. Ooh. They've won one. Uh, Liverpool seems to be in a dominant era, but Everton's up there. Derby County actually finished second. We laughed and mocked Raheem Sterling, but Derby County finished in second and then got relegated. Oh, no, they're there. That's what I was going to say. How did you go from second to get relegated? That's mental. But, yeah, it looks like Everton players are absolutely dominating things. Assists-wise, average rating-wise, and goals. Uh, Luis Suarez is up there for the most goals for Liverpool, which obviously helped them win the league. And Hugo Lloris is their keeper. Oh, my God. That's that's insane. La Liga, has it just been dominated by our classical teams? It has, unfortunately. No, Atletico Madrid getting up there. They're all the way down in ninth. Like, they're not doing very well, to be honest. It's, it's kind of dominated by those two teams, which is sad to see. But as you kind of expect... The Bundesliga was a little bit different though, wasn't it? And they got Schalke knocking around and, and picking up a, a league title there after finishing second. We've got Radamo Falcao uh, by Leverkusen as well. Coutinho's at Schalke, which is another interesting one there. Thomas Muller's at Dortmund. All of these things. You could literally spend hours just looking through a simulation. Dundee United. Aberdeen, Dundee United. Look at that. Is that your first title? I'm really sorry, Dundee United. I'm I don't know whether you've ever... You have won it in 1983. Of course you have. I remember now from when I when I did the Aberdeen one and mentioning that. But that's your first one since 1983. It would have been a little bit closer than what it is. But it's cool that you've got two on the bounce there. That's nice. Let's have a look then in the Italian Serie A and seeing what's been happening there. Pablo Vitti. I don't recognize that name. I don't know whether they still have like some normal, na normal uh, new gens come through as well because obviously... Uh, it would be hard to fill every single one. So Milan's been dominating. Juve's also picked up a league title there. But it doesn't look like there's a lot of familiar names going on right now. Gonzalo Higuain has moved from Napoli. He's now at AC Milan, who, of course, just won the league. So Bruno Fernandes is at Udinese. I think that's where he comes through in this, which is a bit bizarre. I think he might have gone somewhere else to begin with. Hey, he's at Udinese now, who are in eighth place. So there we go. Champions League. Let's see it. Newcastle, all the winners. Marseille have won one as well. Is Kieran Dyer still there? Did he win that? <laughs> Bielsa is the manager, which doesn't surprise me. But seeing Bielsa with hair does. And what a lovely trim that he had back then. Andrew Robertson is their left back. So that gives you an understanding of the, how they've been doing. So Marseille have won it. Schalke have also won it as well. And Newcastle have got a couple in this period of time, as well as one there and two, obviously, that we've seen earlier. So they've done really well in this, to be fair, considering they don't have the money that they would have now. But here we go. Ballon d'Or. We've got a couple for Luis Suarez. R Frank Ribéry. After R so Ronaldinho was the last three that we've seen. Pat Zini won it in this time here. So he's 32 now. He's still at Real Madrid. He won it while he was at Real Madrid. Wayne Rooney finished second place. Frank Ribéry. So yeah, Liverpool. Uh, two, two Liverpool players. And Pat Zini won it again. With Lionel Messi in second place. And Ronaldo in third. That's the first time that we've seen either of them in the Ballon d'Or contention. And it is years after either of them won their first. If you think Ronaldo is 31 here. So we're talking like six or seven years ago in real life, but they would have won it like 10 years before that when Messi was like 19, 19 or 20. I think he actually might have been like 21, maybe, like when he won the Ballon d'Or. But Ronaldo was winning it. So yeah, really strange stuff going on. International tournaments. We've got England winning a World Cup in 2034. So if that was three World Cups later from when it was France 98, that would have been the 2010 World Cup in South Africa and the 2014 one which was in Brazil was won by Italy which was 2038 I think that's roughly where we are right now so 2041 were two years or two or three years after that so that you gives you an idea we're roughly about 2017 in terms of where we are in regards to the players coming through and stuff like that so that gives you an idea but yeah England have won a World Cup what about the Euros? Because uh, we've never even done that recently. They've won two. They've won two of them. And Portugal actually won this one, which would have been the 2016 one. And I I think that's the one that they actually won. Not bad. I mean, my maths sometimes is a little bit off. And you'll tell me, look, you're awful at maths and you got that wrong. But I think I've got that right. I think they did win the 2016 uh, Euros. And this is the 2016 Euros. So, yeah, 
Well done, Portugal. Now we are at present day, and in fact, we are past present day. We're into the future. We're at the end of what this season that we're in right now. So we're at the end of the 2024 season, and I thought we'd start at Kylian Mbappe. It's the first time that he's appearing on the video. Uh, he's still at Monaco, and he never moved to PSG. And obviously, PSG within this timeline would have had the money. I don't think they've had it here. So uh, I don't have the French League loaded, but they just haven't really done much in terms of... Uh, uh, what's been going on in Europe. What I am seeing, though, is some crazy stuff, and the creator of the game, Miles Jacobson, is a huge Watford fan, and Watford have won the Premier League. Yeah, I didn't see that coming either. Uh, so this is quite interesting to see who's in there and who's not. And who's not is Manchester City. Haven't seen them once. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. But let's have a look. We can see some of the very familiar players that we know and love in today's game. Neymar being at Newcastle is quite an interesting one to start off with. He's 32 here, as he is in real life. I'm going to say that now. I'm just going to be annoying. But he's had a very wild career because Santos to Monaco for £6.75 million, pound, which meant he played alongside Mbappe for a bit. Then he was a free transfer to Newcastle. He's had a great time since he's moved to the Premier League. Very interesting. Harry Kane stayed at Tottenham. That's nice for him, I guess. He has a little bit more pace than what he would in real life. Jack Grealish is at Watford. He's helping them win the Premier League. Maybe they want to treble. They also have to Stegen as well. I mean, the team must be amazing. I don't recognise their manager, Carham, but they have Kieran Trippier. They've got Andrew Robertson. Everything's coming up Millhouse for uh, for Watford. What a team that they have. Milinkovic Savic for Fana. Great team. Firmino. Yeah, Luke Shaw is in there. Danny Drinkwater. Oh, love that. Love that for him. Uh, so, great stuff. Don't know how they've done it, but there we go. So, Newcastle are second. And they seem to have been around for a while. They've got Tony Wilkinson, Neymar, Neymar, Alexandro. So, they've got Joe muller Park, who I think was their manager who won the Champions League with them. Uh, so, they've named the stadium after them. Manchester United have Rude Hollett as their manager. Nice. Paul Pogba's still there. Did he stay throughout the whole time? He did. He did go off to Juve twice. They Dean Henderson is their vice captain. How many times have they sacked their managers? Which is... So we'll hide the caretakers. So we knew about Sven. Uh, Kuhlman's we've seen. Ramon Diaz, Cowan's, Craig Fire. Nobody that I really recognise, if I'm honest, until Rude Hullet came around. And he's won two cups. He's won the Europa Conference League and the Worthington Cup, which was the, the was the Carabao Cup. So there we go. So Everton's still around. So it's Liverpool, which is nice. Past winners, though. It's been at... Oh, my God. Everton. Yes. Yes. Louis van Gaal is the manager of the Brownie Moore Dock Stadium, which is looking great there. We've got De Vrij in Hazard's our captain. Bernardo Silva. Did Wayne Rooney retire now? Has he retired... He has. He's, he's hung up his boots at age 34. He did have a spell after in Saudi Arabia, but what a career he had. For England, he had 107 goals, and obviously that's the reason why they managed to get to World Cup finals and wins and stuff like that. So that's phenomenal stuff for him, for Wayne Rooney. Uh, La Liga, still Real Madrid, but Sevilla are a surprise package there in second. But nobody else has ever won it, so Real Madrid's team is managed by Paul Dickoff. <laughs> Mohamed Salah is still their key player. Lovely stuff. We'll have to check to see where Ronaldo and Messi went. Dybala is the uh, key player at Barcelona. And their manager is Vierch I'm I'm sorry if I don't know who they are. And it's like your manager from the 90s or whatever. Andrea Nana's in there. Uh, Trossard is their vice captain, which is weird. So no Messi or Ronaldo. Where are they? Messi is retired. No way. So he, he went to Al-Ali, Al-Halal, sorry, uh, and spent two seasons there and then retired 2046, two years ago, age 34. So he didn't quite have the career that he had in real life and now he is a very terrible fitness coach. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, though, what did he get up to? So he retired age 36. He also went to Al-Halal, so they've played for the same club there, interestingly enough. Uh, but he's doing nothing now after his time in football. So fair play, he's enjoying the rest. So that's... That's nice. That's interesting. Let's have a look then. Scotland, did you have any other weird and wacky wingers? Kilmarnock. Yes, Hearts. So there we go. A couple of more winners outside of the uh, the old firm there, which is good to see. And then we've got the Bundesliga, which has been won by, by Leverkusen recently, but by Munich has been dominating that fair amount. And the Italian Serie A, which seems to have been dominated by AC Milan a lot. 
has still been dominated. Inter Milan have won one recently, but then they dropped off to third place in AC Milan, bit back and won it again. They've got some strange players that I wouldn't expect to be that good. Dujon Sterling being there, Dejan Kulusevski's in the league, Malcolm. And so, yeah, I think the Italian league's dropped off a little bit in this compared to where we were at the start because they were like the bee's knees, weren't they? The players that you've seen, unbelievable talents. It does seem like the Italian Serie A has, has dropped off just ever so slightly. But okay, so Bruno Fernandes, I'm interested to see where he went because obviously I've just seen, he went to Leicester. Amazing, brilliant. Can't write that. So <laughs> there we go. Champions League winners. We'll have a look at the Champions League winners before we check the Ballon d'Or for the very last time. Bayern Munich are the current winners. Everton has won it again. Great from you. Uh, Real Madrid a couple of times as well as Liverpool. So that's been quite an entertaining competition seeing loads of different winners there because obviously we had a period of time here where Real Madrid just completely dominated it. Finally, for the last time, let's have a look at the Ballon d'Or. Isco for Valencia has won the Ballon d'Or. Where did he... Has he been at Valencia the whole time? Wow. Fair enough. Bernardo Silva won it at Everton. Mohamed Salah. Gareth Bale won it three years in a row. Yes, Gareth. Love that. Not playing golf now, is he? No, he's in Saudi Arabia. Probably playing golf. So, yeah, there we go. What do you think of this? This has been such an entertaining, like, experience for me. We can see some of the players here that are still knocking around in the high current abilities. Alfredo Ruiz, I don't know. I think, I'm guessing that's just a normal new gen. But the rest of them seem very recognisable. Victor, did he? Wow. They actually gone to Napoli and at Napoli in real life. How weird is it some of these are actually at those clubs right now? Like Sadio Mane, he doesn't come through there. He went to Bayern Munich, but now he's still there. It's, it's bizarre when that happens. De Bruyne is not at Liverpool, but Van Dijk is. Madison is at Liverpool there, which is a bit strange. Raheem Sterling still enjoying himself at Derby County. Rafael Liao is also at Napoli. So I, I could just go through this all the time. Delicts at Real Madrid. Doku's at Anderlecht still, but still amazing. Saka's coming through the ranks now. Yeah, this is this was a lot of fun. So thank you very much for Mr. Tiny for giving me access to this so I can show you guys and showcase it. Uh, and I'm sh I can't believe I haven't shown you him yet. Erlen Haaland is also at Liverpool, which is quite funny. Ruben Neves, Joe Neves. Yeah, there's loads of players there. So yes, thank you very much for, for allowing me to have a look at this. Remember, it's going to be available at the very start of February, but you can check out Mr. Tiny's Patreon if you want it uh, early and have a look at that. Please make sure if you want to donate to the wrestling pages, you check the link at the top of the description. We are, we've surpassed £500 for charity, which is amazing. If we can get that and double it to 1000 that blows my mind how we've managed to do that. It's all for a fantastic cause, the Keep Me Close Foundation, which supports parents who have newborn children who are premature and need extra care. It gives them accommodation so they can stay close to their child, which honestly, with two children myself, it gives me like shivers just thinking about not being able to do that. So it's a cracking charity. Thank you to everybody who has helped donate it. And remember, if there is a wrestling show that you want to come along to, please message me on the comments or on social medias uh, and I can help you find the links to get some tickets. I'd love to see some of you guys in the crowd. Of course, meet some of you. That would be fantastic. And, and occasionally my dad goes to quite a few of these, so you would also get to see my dad. I remember somebody went and watched one of the wrestling shows and messaged me out saying, can't believe I've just seen Omega Dad. And I thought, so you, you care more of it? Fair enough. Fair enough. I understand. I completely understand it. Uh, Glory Hunters coming up this weekend, but I did do another video where I took a Japanese player, Japanese bringer, and I tried to control his career, and it's a banger trying to win the Ballon d'Or. Watch it right now. It's up on the screen. Cheers.